Hello and welcome to Mini Mini Talk Talk. A six part series on video games and the lives of other people. In this first episode, we would like to introduce you to our main subject of discussion and the reason we are creating this series in the first place, a video game called Mini Mini Golf Golf. And we would like to also start with a claim, namely that video games are more than just casual pastime. Video games are tunnels into the past, into the future and into the lives of other people. This is learning from the future. We received some feedback and mails from our viewers and I would really like to read them to you. So let's directly jump in. I now read a mail we received from Marsha. Marsha writes us, Hi Mini Mini Talk Talk, thank you for your show. I really like your discussion about game design. Well, thank you Marsha. I am a bit of a game designer myself, especially since I became a mom. Game design is basically almost everything I do. I feel like life very much became a, like a roller coaster, you know, with loopings and stuff. And when you manage to navigate all of that and succeed with something on your first try, it feels like the greatest achievement of all time. What a nice feedback and insight. I love loopings, by the way. But for now, let's go back. There is much more to come here in this episode. Let's take a step back and examine some of the decisions that went into the design of Mini Mini Golf Golf. After all, it was these decisions that left us where we are now. With tunnels into the past, the future and into the lives of other people. When I design a game, the initial impulse often comes from a strong image or an emotion or an issue. Now, it is not necessarily obvious, but Mini Mini Golf Golf has buried deep beneath its layers of code and graphic design and animation, a very strong and distinct feeling. One that lies at the very heart of the game itself, and sure enough, is the reason the game got created in the first place. It's not a super trivial feeling though, at least for me. I have a hard time putting it into a single word or even a number of exact words. Um, I can tell you a story though. Back in the super early 90s, I was still very much a child and three things happened. One, my godfather, who I only ever saw twice in my life, gave me a microscope. Two, a somewhat weird distant relative of mine got me a Game Boy. And three, cable television. And I got to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs. But that's probably another story. That's most definitely another story. Being 11 years old is a time full of wonder and excitement. You're just old enough to understand stuff around you and have proper friends. And enemies. And enemies. Probably another story as well. I am sure many people can relate when I tell you that I had trouble falling asleep. I think it wasn't because of nightmares or anxiety about burglars coming in through my bedroom window. No, I couldn't fall asleep because I was too excited about the world. For a couple of weeks after getting the microscope, I would make observations about the complex and wild cell structures of my own saliva. But I had to do it under the blanket so that my brother, who slept in the same room as me, wouldn't wake up. Now, I don't know if you have ever tried to use a microscope under a blanket looking at the cells of your own spit, but it's not a particularly sustainable practice. This is a sustainable practice. I would even call it cozy. Hi, I'm back with another feedback mail that reached us. This time it is from a person that did not really appreciate video games that much, I guess. Hi Mini Mini Talk Talk. I work as a teacher and as you know in school, we don't usually play games, but read books instead. Last term, I had a kid in my class that was super strange. Well, that seems a bit harsh, doesn't it? When we discussed the story about the snake that ate an elephant, they would not really pay attention. When I drew the famous and very well-known image of the snake and the elephant on the blackboard, they would start giggling. When I inquired about what was so funny, they told me how they would use this as a ramp to launch themselves into space. 
And after they repeated their story three times, launching from the ram, flying out into space, conquering the stars, I finally had to separate the kid, a mirror seat neighbor, who by that time started to join in with the madness. I wanted to write to you to tell you that I blame video games for this. Sincerely, a concerned teacher. Well, I can see that point there, and it is important to give this perspective a voice. But anyway, thank you for this lecture, and I hope the kids will start to behave. Anyway, I have very vivid memories of this. At that time, in 1992, there wasn't really that big of a distinction between looking at the mesmerizing real world of organic cell biology through the lens of a microscope, or the mesmerizing made-up world of an incarcerated gladiator fighting great evil in a fantasy setting. To me, video games have always held a sense of wonder about the world, about what happens just outside the screen, just outside the things we know or comprehend. As a child, I could extend my world with a microscope. Nowadays, we make video games to allow others to extend their imagination beyond the screen itself. So you are trying to say that imagining yourself in other places is part of the core emotion that led to the design of Mini Mini Golf Golf? I mean, it's not like you are playing a secret storytelling story experiment in an alternate, alternate universe, universe or something. It's just Mini Golf. It's just Mini Golf. Ominous. Ominous. <laughs> Ominous. <laughs> yes, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. Ominous. Ominous. Too much. No. Ominous. We got one last mail from our viewers for today's episode. This fan mail comes from a user called Dad. Hey Mini Mini Talk Talk, how are you today? Well, thanks for asking that, I am very fine today. I have a child at home and I can't seem to be getting through to them. Whatever it is, I say, it feels like they live in another world ever since me and my wife broke up and she left us. It feels like running up that same hill over and over again, without any sort of development. How many more times should I try to approach them? Maybe one last try? Maybe it will succeed this one last time? Thank you, Dad, for sharing what is on your mind. Well, I would definitely give it one last try. You would be surprised to see the crazy things that can happen if you succeed on your last try. I am really amazed by all the sendings we received for our very first episode. Thanks a lot, guys. Looking forward to hearing from you throughout the next episodes. Future Leonie out. Well, like you said in the beginning, video games are tunnels into the past, into the future, and into the lives of other people. 